Well, welcome one and all to the uh, monthly membership team meeting. Uh, my name is Ken Crabb and I'm the uh, uh, team lead uh, at this point in time. It's um, uh, my pleasure to uh, have uh, Alex Johnson speak to us tonight. Uh, and so we are going to lead off with him. Uh, and then if there's any time at the end, uh, we can talk about uh, more mundane uh, district items if, if uh, there's enough time. But I do want to respect people's time and I uh, do hope that we'll end uh, very close to eight o'clock. So Alex Johnson is a business coach in Plano, Texas and a two-time past president of the Plano West Rotary Club in District 5810, the Dallas Metro area. Johnson coaches entrepreneurs by helping with accountability and organization to scale their business and have more free time. He enjoys applying his business skills to help the 23 districts of Zone 25B and Zone 29, which is our zone, to grow Rotary as the innovative club advocate and assistant Rotary coordinator. Johnson is the recipient of many Rotary Awards, including Membership Society, Outstanding Club President, Voltarian of the Year, Club of the Year, Rotary Citation, Major Donor, and Number One in Rotary Foundation per capita giving. As President, Plano West Rotary was the fastest growing club in North America, written about twice in the Rotary Magazine, and highlighted at the recent uh, Houston Convention by John Hucold, our uh, Rotary General Counsel and CEO. Plano West tripled its membership to majority women, people of color, and under 50 years of age by implementing the Rotary Action Plan with six service projects a month. Alex will share how clubs can grow through Rotary service in supporting the Rotary Foundation. Please help me welcome Alex. Hey, welcome everybody. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And as Zoom changes everything when you do a share, can you guys see my screen well? Yep. Yep. Very, very, very good. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm actually, actually happy to see two of my ARC teammates, Mike Becker and Lyle Staub here. So if they're making faces or heckling me, it's, they're my friends, so it's good. <laughs> We'll make them give more money to the foundation. <laughs> so go ahead and heckle. Well, what I'd like to talk about is Rotary, obviously. But first, what I like to do is anybody heard me speak, something I like to, to do is remind everybody that what year did Rotary start? Anybody know? Speak up. You're allowed to speak. 1913. 1905. 1905. We are a 117 year old organization, which is pretty amazing. Now, I've been in Rotary 19 years, and I love Rotary more now than when I did when I joined. I didn't really know what I was joining then. I was also 35 years old. I'm 56 now. I learned a little bit about Rotary and what, and what we watched. I was a little 37, I think, when I joined. But the question I have for you, and you could either unmute, show your hands, who here loves Rotary? Let's like see a show of hands here. If you're doing a Zoom at seven o'clock at night, um, you probably love Rotary. So this is what I wanna do. Everybody, undo your mics. So go unmute. And I'm gonna, I know we've had long days. I have a standing desk. So I've been standing all day just to put it in perspective. I want on a count of three, everybody to say, I love Rotary. One, I, two, three. I love, I love Rotary. 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 One more time. One, two, three. I love Rotary. I love Rotary. 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 There we go. See, Kathy, that's going to be great for the recording, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> and we love Rotary. We're here because we want to change lives. Isn't that why most people join Rotary? We want to change lives. And we do that through our service. Well, when you look at this picture here, this is showing a lot of different. Now I'm showing my club, Plano West Rotary. Now, if you look at these are different service projects that we've done, you want some are food delivery, trash pickup, uh, some we're actually distributing COVID vaccination awareness information when the vaccines first came out, partnering with the school district. And if you look at that, 
Anybody tell me what they see when they look at that picture? Younger people. A varsity. Teamwork. Teamwork. And these are our volunteers. You notice everybody has the same shirt on, properly mm -hmm. rotary branded. Now, when you look at that, these pictures, about 80% of those people are not members of Rotary. They are volunteers. That is how we grew our club, by getting the community to volunteer with us, making them feel part of the family with t-shirts, camaraderie. They see the diversity. So they're like, wow. So this, that's what I'm going to talk about, is how different clubs in different districts can do this. Now, the challenge we have is for decades, Rotary globally, Rotary US especially, and our districts are losing members. And we all know that. Now, what we're really great at are meetings, right? We have great meetings. We're also really good at fundraising and donating money to other nonprofits other than the Rotary Foundation. We are phenomenal at that. If you ask a typical Rotary club, do they give the percentage that they donate? What percentage goes to our nonprofit called the Rotary Foundation and what goes to other nonprofits? They donate more out the door. So it's really kind of, we're one of the only nonprofits in the world that fundraise for other nonprofits in our own. So it's kind of confusing to people when they join. We, we're a service organization, but we fundraise for other nonprofits and we pride ourselves on our great meetings. And so we need to change that paradigm because most people, they don't want more meetings and they don't want to fundraise. They actually want to change lives. And so when you look at what I see here, anybody tell me what we're looking at? I know Mike knows <laughs> for sure because he gets this every month. Membership. Membership. This is your district and membership. Now, what does that 66 represent? Members lost. Percent. Average members lost per over the last 11 years. So that means as a district, you're losing 66 people per year on average. Now, other districts are worse. They don't feel like you guys are being penalized. We know this is happening from an RI point of view. So now, there's a, a point, like as you mentioned, I'm a business coach. And anybody that talks to me about Rotary, you know, I, I'm, you know, I have another speech. Uh, it's called How to Grow a Rotary Club Like a Business. And I, I used to do this at the club level. John Huco, he says, we need to treat Rotary like a business. He runs a $125 million business. Because you know, everybody knows who John Huco is, right? And so he's our CEO, general counsel for Rotary International, paid staff. Our presidents change every year. John Huco, he's the one that all the staff reports to. I think we have a little over 700, close to 800 staff globally. He's the man. And this is a business. And when the business doesn't do well, the board of directors has the opportunity of what do they do? They change out the CEO. So he's always looking at how to prove the business. Well, when we look at Rotary as a business, what is our bottom line? How, just take out the four-way test and what we do. What drives a non, our nonprofit? What drives any nonprofit? Membership. Revenue, revenue, revenue right? If we don't have any money, we don't have an organization. <laughs> if, if his 130 million goes down to zero, we have no staff, we have no resources. We just have a bunch of clubs that are spread out there. And that happens at the club level too, right? If your club hmm. runs out of money, no matter how great your passion is, what's gonna happen with the club? It's not gonna happen. Well, how do we get money as an organization? Membership, mm -hmm. people pay their dues. So that doesn't mean that membership is our number one priority. It's our number one internal priority to maintain our membership, but it kind of tells you when we look at ourselves as an organization, that's how we have to start gauging our success. If we are not keeping our members, that means we're losing, losing money. Now that doesn't mean, you know, if we never recruited a member, but we just kept the ones we have, we'd be doing phenomenal. But you'd be at 3,000 <laughs> because what we our problem is we lose members. We actually recruit more members every year, but we lose more than we recruit. And so we don't have a recruiting problem. We have a member retention problem. That's why President Jennifer Jones, Comfort and Care, 
is what she's focused on. In fact, both Jennifer Gordon McNally and Stephanie Erchak, they're, they're all jointly pied that they're across all three presidencies, they're gonna focus on membership retention because study after study, the facts prove that's where we lack. We don't keep our members. And so let me show you uh, uh, what we need to do. And part of that is changing our mindset. We, we focus on things that don't necessarily help our bottom line. Case in point, when you, anybody here speak out, when you talk to somebody, you, somebody shows up at a Rotary event, what's the first thing you ask them? Do you want to join, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then what is their first objection? Because nobody ever says yes. They say, why can't they join? What's the reason why? Too expensive. Time. Yeah, they don't have time for the weekly meetings, right? Does anybody ever say they don't have time to help out in the community? No. No. But what do we lead with? We lead with meetings, which isn't who we are. We're about service, service above self. I, try, I encourage you to do this. When somebody asks you, what does is, what is Rotary do? Say we serve in our community and give examples of service projects you've done locally that they can relate to. What does it take to become a Rotarian? Volunteer. That's all it takes. Aren't those the kind of members that we want? Yeah. But when you tell somebody what's it take to become a Rotarian, uh, you got to be at this club, 100% attendance. Woo! <laughs> They're like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> Nobody has time for meetings. Look at of your entire district. We have not everybody's here because it's another meeting. You know, but people will show up if they're changing lives. So we got to change that mindset. What are we about? We're not about meetings. Now, and that, uh, that mindset of, hey, how are you doing? You want to join Rotary? I always tell everybody, think of Rotary like getting married. When you meet somebody, you don't say, hi, how are you doing? Let's get married. No, you date. <laughs> you know, let's go to lunch. Well, join me on the service project. Come do this. Come help the needy. Then they get to know you. Then you ask, hey, have you ever thought about getting married? You know, think about that. And so what I want to give you an example of what a club did, because we, like I said, I've been in Rotary 19 years, and I know there's people here that have been in, in Rotary long enough, longer than that. Just a couple of days ago, I was talking with a club member in, what is it, one of the Wisconsin districts. He's been in Rotary 50 years, 85 years old, and he wants to start a new club. Is that exciting? <laughs> An 85-year-old man, 50-year Rotarian, and he's passionate. He already has 25 people lined up to join this club. <laughs> it's just unreal. I'm like, God, I, I told him, you know, you've been in Rotary 31 years longer than me. <laughs> you know, that's pretty amazing. I was six years old when he joined Rotary. That's the kind of passion we want in our people. So here we see Plano West Rotary. Is that kind of looking like that's actually a typical Rotary Club, right? Up, down membership. If overall, it's a decline. You know, basically over the these nine years, they're down um, seven members, 21. Anybody knows it takes 20 to start a Rotary Club. When a club, when clubs get below 20, that's when the governor team is kind of saying, oh, we need to help them. You have Ken Crab, DMC saying, these are the clubs that we need to keep from going under. We don't want to terminate. Well, that's when I took over as president. We're at 21, the lowest ever. They're in Plano, which is a suburb of Dallas, a large suburb. We have about 300,000 people. We have six Rotary Clubs. We have Tuesday noon, Wednesday noon, Wednesday night, Thursday noon, Thursday night, and Friday morning. So there's Rotary everywhere. <laughs> you know. And so what do you think when you've got the second oldest club but they're at the lowest in membership. What is the governor team asking these presidents to do? Anyone? There's six Rotary clubs in this city. Merge. Merge. And so that was me. I'm like, oh man, if we follow our trend, we go below 20, we're going to have a lot of pressure. Well, then COVID hit. So I'm like, oh, well, I'm doomed. <laughs> you know, that's like, and remember, I'm from the state that didn't believe in COVID. So <laughs> it was just like, hey. And so I am doomed and nobody believes in it. You know, who knows what's going to happen? Well, what did happen is this. As Ken said, we tripled in membership. So, and I was president the second year when it was 66. And someone said, why do you keep on growing? 
if anybody has ever been in an organization that triples in size, you've got a capacity, you've got a system structural, there's just a lot going on. And so the second year president, my goal was to put systems, I'm a business coach, put systems in place, get people trained, have processes. Because when we went from this club of 21, we didn't have committees. We didn't even have a membership app because nobody ever really joined. When I joined, I was in another club for 15 years and I switched to this club in 2019. They didn't even have a membership app. <laughs> they had to dig it out of the files because nobody ever really joined the club and that, and that wasn't their goal. Well, then we had to put all this stuff in place. And so that's what happened. So, the, so you're saying your biggest question is, how did you do that? Well, this isn't, suppose, this isn't a case study on Plano West Rotary. I'm just using it as an example. So you know a, a club like yours, it can be done. And keep in mind, this was done during COVID. You know, this was done during COVID where we couldn't meet. Our club was in Zoom for two years. Well, this is, if somebody, you might've seen this in the magazine or John Huco had a version of this up at the convention. When we started, we had 21 members, 14% um, were women. That means three, 10% uh, people of color. I was the first minority in the club in 40 other years and I recruited a Pakistani friend. So we were the two token minorities and our median age was 67. I think I was about 53 at the time. So I was considered young. I was like, we need more young people like Alex. This is the median age. And so by the end of that first year, we tripled to 63 members. We went to majority women, 52%. People of color, majority people of color, we're talking Asians, Hispanics, Blacks, and then young people. We had club members from 18 to 85. Actually, two of our board members were in college as teenagers, and one of them is still our club secretary going on his third year and he's going to graduate in a month. And the other one is in our club. She's on the board, but she goes to college at University of Texas in Austin. So she only, and she has actually uh, <laughs> on a couple committees, she's a board member, but she's remote, obviously. So, but we did it through 81 service projects. Now, these were simple, what I call fun, impactful, small service projects. They weren't big mega ones. I always tell everybody, if you have to have a committee, it's too big. And I'll talk more about how these service projects came apart. But, but what I wanna say is, that's what we did. So that's kind of like the eye opener. Now I wanna show you what you can do to do the same thing. Because one, we did it during COVID. So we had a lot of limitations. Our club was very COVID conscious. Not like I said, the state wasn't, but we were. Like nobody can volunteer unless they wore a mask. You know, well, I had to have some tough conversations in Texas about that. You guys know how Texas was, you know, but that's what we, you know, we're leaders in disease prevention. How are we not gonna, you know, prevent a disease? So everybody should recognize this, right? This is our mission statement as an organization. And if you notice a lot, and it's, it's amazing how many people aren't familiar with it. We, I highlighted this, what do we do? We provide service to others. We promote integrity, advance world understanding, goodwill and peace through our fellowship of business, professional and community leaders. So what is that saying? You know, promoting integrity and advance world understanding, goodwill and peace. That those are, but provide service to others because we're a service organization. That's what we do. Some people say, well, what do we do? Well, we provide service through our fellowship. So when you think of what a meeting is, a meeting is fellowship. You know, somebody mentioned their BNI group, that's fellowship. When people get together, whether it's a party, a social or a meeting, it's fellowship. But we're not a felt, we don't, we provide fellowship to others. It doesn't say that. It says we provide service. So when you talk about Rotary, talk about who we are. We're a service organization. But what is it gonna matter to people in your community? They wanna know what's happening local to them that they're passionate about. So that's part of what we wanna talk about. So this is our mission. This is Rotary's mission. This is all of our club's mission. Some clubs create their own mission, but this is our mission. 
<laughs> this is our mission. When you create your own, but this is the main mission. We did three things, and this is what a club can do. Three things to grow through service. Before I talk about those three things, let me, there's an analogy I like to give. It's part of my Grow Rotary through, Grow Rotary called like a business. If we're a business, my question is, let's go back here. What's our product? Service. Service. Yeah. Service. Now here's the twist. We are not, we are not nonprofit agencies, are we? We know the difference between a 501c4 and a 501c3. We are not C3s. They are agencies. They truly serve those in need. But we can partner with them. We create service projects in partnership with the agencies. That's how we provide service. If you think about what the Rotary Foundation does, when we do a, a global grant, we don't cut checks. It does not cut checks. It creates service projects. And what does it do? It requires you to partner with the local community. They have to be involved. It also requires sustainability as well. That's what, who we are as an organization. We just forget about it as a club because it's too complicated to do all that. It's easier to write a check. But we, our product is service, provides service opportunities to our community. So who is our client? Anyone. The, the, the community. community. Exactly. Yeah. The community. So our product is provide service projects. The community are our clients. Who are our employees? Our members. Our members. So our job is to help create service projects that the community can volunteer on. That's what our company does. So then we and anybody can join our company if they want. They get to help us tr create these service projects as opposed to just volunteering. So that's this analogy of how to grow Rotary Club like a business. So when you think of, let's have product. If you, if you saw it, we were in like the one, the Rotary Magazine this year was a small little article. The one last year or two years ago, it was like a four pager and they had a great quote in there. And the quote was, we're like, we're a service project. Um, what was it? We are a service project assembly line. That's what our club was. We were just doing, working with the community. They have lots and lots of service projects to get people to buy. How do they buy? By volunteering with us. It's a cheap buy. And it's also a very easy sale. Do you know how easy it is to get somebody to volunteer at a service project? It's a lot easier than getting them to show up at a meeting or to join Rotary. You know, it's better to have them serve. Then they get part of the joy, the love. Then they're going to be saying, how do I be part of these great people? So that's our company. So let's talk about three ways that we made our company as a club more efficient. The first one is pretty amazing. Is anybody familiar with this? This yes. is Rotary Strategic Plan. It's called the Rotary Action Plan. We implemented Rotary strategic plan. Isn't that novel? We used Rotary's mission and implemented their strategic plan. Crazy. Now, I will say, anybody, anybody going to Melbourne here? Yay. Well, I'm involved in two separate breakout sessions on the Rotary Action Plan. One's going to be a general one. I think I'm moderating a panel. Then the other one's going to be an hour and a half workshop on how to deploy how clubs can deploy the Rotary Action Plan. So I'm going to kind of give you a highlight. Attend them, definitely attend them. But a lot of people don't understand how to practically use the Rotary Action Plan. So I'm going to kind of quickly go through it. One, increase your impact. There's actually courses on it. There's documentation. I mean, I spend a lot of time working with Rotary staff on this whole subject. And so increase, so, so I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but I know a lot more than I did a few years ago, increase your impact. What that is saying is increase your social impact. Anybody in the nonprofit world, you're familiar with that concept of social impact. That's what you're doing good in the community. That's, that's our first goal of the Rotary Action Plan is for us to increase our social impact. Well, that's also a requirement of the Rotary Foundation. You know, what are we? I think 14 years perfect rating as an organization. Well, those rating organizations are requiring organizations to increase their impact more and more and more. 
And we do that by having impactful projects in our community that are involved in the community and that are sustainable. Well, it doesn't have to be a mega rotary grant. It could be a little bitty project like picking up litter. If you're doing it on a regular basis, uh, systematically, you're making an impact. Get the community involved. Novel concept. Do little things in your community that are going to make a difference. Expand your reach. There's a couple ways of looking at it. Typically, the expand your reach was um, get different people involved. And that's important. But a concept I introduced, and Tom Thorfinson, he's our chief strategic officer. He says he loves it, and he's taken it to staff. Expand your reach through your service projects. Instead of just doing it verbally, do it through service. And when you combine the two, in fact, a few people uh, saw me at Zoe when I spoke to the Emerging Leaders Group, and I talked about this specifically. When you expand your reach, one of the goals we have is to change the look of our clubs so they look like your community. And that's not just race. I mean, there's some, I know I was working with a DMC out of Kansas, and his particular club, their city is 89% white. And I'm like, don't worry about minorities. <laughs> You know, you only got 11%. And if you just get one or two people in your club, you hit that. You need to be worrying about, I go, how many women do you have? Most communities have 50, you know, 51% women. He's like, yeah, we're about 20. Well, duh. You know, what's your median age? You know, it's like, yeah, it's about 70. Well, is that your community? No. Well, there's an area. What about religion? Are you guys all Christians? Well, I guarantee your, Christ your, your community is not all Christians. You know, you want to look like your community. And so what we did is we chose service projects in areas that didn't look like our club. Like, for example, we needed, remember, we we're 14% women. We needed more women. So what did we do? We partnered with nonprofits that women appreciated. You know what the, I'll tell you, the, the most common nonprofit that the majority of their volunteers are women and it's not, I'm going to, somebody ask, and I'm going to, what I, what the answer is, is you're going to say, oh, no kidding. But who, who thinks is a nonprofit that the majority of their volunteers are women? Tell me what you think it is. YWCA. No, mm. a bigger one, school districts. Right. Partner <laughs> with your school districts. Anything you do with the school district, you're going to have women come in out of the woodwork to help you. Why? Because they want to take care of the kids, not just their kids, all the kids. That's what we did. We were the only nonprofit that have a strategic relationship with our school district. And it's a large school district, 300,000 people. We had, we, what we did was we, we asked them, how can we help? Unlike most Rotary clubs, they're either looking for, um, we, will you join our club or will you let us distribute? You know, most Rotary clubs are wanting things. We just said, we just want to help. There's no quid pro quo here. We just want to help. How can we help? Well, the first thing we helped is almost every school district, especially during COVID, they had um, food drives. You know, especially when you have Title I schools, most communities have Title I, and they have food. They're, they're getting, well, what happens is for a school district to distribute that food to the families in need, you've got teachers and admin doing it. This is not in their employment contract, but they're doing it because they care. So what did we do? We created service projects to find volunteers to help deliver food. At one, at one point we were doing, I think one, two, three, four, six food drives a week because that's how much the school was doing it. Do you think they appreciated us by doing that? Heck yeah, because those people were able to teach. <laughs> you know, they wanted to help. So we had volunteers. Well, who are those volunteers? The same mothers that wanted to do stuff through PTA, but here they had the opportunity to easily volunteer and help. Well, what did they end up doing? Them and teachers joining our club. We have more teachers in our club than any other club in Plano a because we partner with them. That's, that's just project. an example. And so if you're looking for another thing, we, we have a large um, Asian population. When I say Asians, I'm talking about Chinese, Middle Eastern, so on. And we have, a, we have a, a pretty good sized Muslim population. Was not represented in our club at all. And actually not in our district from a Muslim or Asian point of view. What did we do? We started partnering with the mosque. 
you know, the, the faith of Islam, they do so much community service, it's unreal. Most people don't realize it. And they are a very service-based um, faith. And so we were, we're letting them know of our projects. And a lot of people were just looking for different things to do. And they saw that they could get inroads and part of the community by working with us to the point where we had multiple mosques would put our club's um, website, our project list on their websites and encouraging them people to sign up. Well, when people find out that Rotary, which doesn't have a great reputation for minorities and anything that's not white, when they find out that we're open and treat them as equals and just want their help and we're helping them and everybody, they're like, wow, this is great. Are we allowed to join? Of course you are. You know, so we have a, we have Muslims from different different mosques in our club and we have that volunteer with us. They were just members like everybody else. Why? Because we expanded our reach to partner with them and asking nothing but help, ask them to help us. Didn't ask anything in return, didn't ask for a donation or anything, didn't ask to come to a meeting, that's for sure. Our website says, and there the membership stuff is, um, meetings are not required, but service, community service is expected. And I tell people, don't. my wife joined after me being in Rotary for 17 years, she joined when Plano West Rotary changed. She is a chair of three different committees. And of course, she's got all that, you know, Paul Harris stuff with me. She has never been to a club meeting. She works in Dallas. She's a commercial property manager. She manages about 4 million square feet of industrial warehouse and distribution centers. She's a busy woman. She works about 70 hours a week, but she loves her job. She doesn't have time for meetings. Sometimes she'll zoom in, but her weekends are free. Her nights are free. So she can handle different aspects of our club remotely or on weekends. She volunteers more than I do. She's never been to a meeting ever. And this she's going on her, I guess, second, third year, third year in, in, in our club. Meetings are not who we are. And it definitely doesn't um, determine club service. Okay, let's go into increase our ability to adapt because I'm gonna save enhanced participant engagement for last. We've got a lot of people that have been in Rotary for a long time, 30, not counting me on here. What, can anybody tell me what, what is the biggest hindrance to us changing as an organization? We've not always done it change. that way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we don't yeah. want to change, inertia. right? Yeah, inertia. We, we, we're like, we've done it that way. What do you mean? When I joined Rotary as a perfect attendance club, we got to do that. This is the way it's been. It was done for 117 years. Well, <laughs> that's why one of our um, four step, our fourth step is increase our ability to adapt. COVID made us do it, kicking and screaming. I know in some districts, they had clubs that just quit meeting for they, they refused to do Zoom and they just quit meeting. Well, we know what happened to their membership, right? You know, that's not wanting to adapt. Another reason not wanting to adapt, a lot of clubs never um, upgraded their constitution and bylaws to the required constitution that, that if, if, a, if a DG enforced it, they could have their charter terminated because we have to be at the, the latest level of the constitution. That's the one thing that all clubs globally have in common or even use the bylaw. They don't wanna do it. You know, there's no rotary police. Well, because of that, they are being organized and run by ancient rules that don't even, like the people know that RI in the last council of legislation, they did away with the ability of even reporting attendance. We, we can't give it to RI if we wanted to, but you know how many clubs track attendance and that's how they determine their success of their club. That's not a rotary thing anymore. That's a club thing. People don't want to increase the ability to adapt. But I know some clubs, they, if you don't show up to a meeting, they're going to ask you to leave. So my wife would have never been able to be in our club. She's a major donor too. She's chair of three committees. <laughs> you know, it's like she does everything you want to do in a Rotarian, but she doesn't show up because she has a job. You know, and a lot of people have jobs or they're in school or they have a life and showing up for a meeting just isn't going to work. Why judge them for it? Be inclusive. There's other opportunities to serve service projects, club service. So that there's so many areas that we can increase our ability to adapt. But let's talk about enhanced participant engagement. This is really big. And this is what I said, our next three are, you know, we have Jennifer Gordon and Stephanie, they're focusing on this whole member retention. 
You notice this says enhance participant engagement. It doesn't say enhance rotary engagement or even volunteer engagement. A participant is anybody that participates in a service project. They can be a member or a non-member. Well, and this, is, this, this plan was put out in 2019. This isn't even a new plan. Just most people haven't seen it. So Rotary knew what we needed to do to succeed. But of course, we never want to listen to Rotary, right? They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> You know, but your club's not growing. So, if, you know, what's that model doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result is a definition of what? Insanity. Well, that's a rotary club. You know, this isn't new. This has been out. We're going on our fourth year that this strategic action plan has been available. Rotary is begging us to enhance our participant engagement. When somebody shows up at an event, it could be a meeting. Hopefully it's a service project. I hope your club has more service than meetings because like right now, how many lives are we changing at this meeting right now? None. <laughs> we are not fulfilling our mission. <laughs> this was, we're through fellowship, but we're not providing service or promoting integrity or increasing world understanding. We're just having a meeting. Well, that's the problem. We have a lot of meetings and we don't get anything done. We talk a lot. It's so easy to get out in the community and do something because there's so many nonprofits out there that we could just help them do what they do. It's easy. So when we have some event and somebody shows up, let's say they are a club member and you've got a big club and somebody shows up. What do we usually do? Oh, get to work. <laughs> we take them for granted. We don't talk to them. We got to talk to the people that are new. Well, it, you, that's not how you treat people. If when you're in a company, somebody tell me what organization within a company takes care of the employees? Does retention, yeah. satisfaction, yeah. training, development? HR. HR. In Rotary, that's called membership. Human resources is membership. Now, if you've got an HR department at your job and all they focus on is recruiting, how good of HR will that be for you? It's going to suck <laughs> because that's the kind of services, benefits, training. You're not going to have any development. You're going to leave and find a company that takes care of their employees. Well, that's what's happening with Rotary. We focus on recruiting the new people and we don't take care of our ones that are here. So when somebody shows up at an event, whether they're in Rotary, been in Rotary 10 years, five years or 50 years, hey, how are you doing? You know, what do you do for a living? You're a lawyer. Well, you know, we got another lawyer, we put him in the closet, but hey, we'll introduce you to him. People like meeting people that, that are doing the same thing. Hey, do you volunteer for any other nonprofits? Remember, this is a club member. Everybody volunteers for another nonprofit. That's awesome. Maybe you could help us uh, volunteer with them. We could get a, our Rotary Club, could have a service project. Is that something you would like to do? You know, let's say they're a cancer survivor. You know they're working for a cancer nonprofit. We can do something with that nonprofit. What is that going to do to your club member when you take an interest in them and what's interesting to them? Do you think they're going to want to stay in the club? Especially if they're involved in projects that are tied to what's interest to them. Hey, do you have kids? Bring them. All of everything we do is family friendly. No, they don't have to join. Just come, you know. Make people feel comfortable. That's comfort and care that Jennifer Jones is pushing. Well, the, the irony is we do the same thing for people we don't know. Hey, have you ever been to one of our service projects? No. Well, hey, what do you do for a living? Buddy Ken, he used to be a doctor. You guys would probably know each other. Da, da, da. You know, same thing. When somebody shows up, do what you do when you go to a networking event. You Talk to them, introduce them, make them feel comfortable. You could even have t-shirts and have them feel like they're part of the group. Let me show you, these are, these are behind me, my background shows it's a collage of a lot of our service projects. We used to have yellow t-shirts years ago, they, we got rid of those quickly. But what do you see? A bunch of people in blue t-shirts that are Rotary. So when somebody shows up, what are they thinking? This is Rotary, it's not. But when they show up, we give them a t-shirt. What does that do? That makes them feel like they're part of the group. That makes them feel included. Simple thing. 
we're a poor club. Our dues are 200 a year. <laughs> and then we know the rotary tax is about 150. So we don't make a lot of money from our dues, but we do spend money on these t-shirts, $7.75 a t-shirt. I know that. <laughs> and we go through a lot of t-shirts because we do a lot of service projects. Simple things like that, that make people feel included. That's how you enhance participant engagement. So if you think about it, you know, anybody that knows how to make somebody feel at home, you could Google that. Well, now you know how to make somebody increase their engagement, give them opportunities to be involved. So let's talk about the second thing we did. <laughs> now, that was the Rotary Action Plan. Like I said, we're going to have two breakout sessions on it. It's, it's amazing. Go, go to the RRI website and you will see a lot of great information on the Rotary Action Plan. The second thing is we need to properly deal with public image. Most Rotary, okay, if you think of word business, what is public image? It's sales and marketing. What does sales and marketing do? It presents your product to your clients. What most Rotary clubs do with their PI, they have, they have pictures of them with a big check. We donated all this money. That doesn't make anybody want to join you. That's, that's like, great, if I join them, I got to write big checks too. Or we talk about, you know, these are our great members. If a company talks about the all the money they spend or they talk about their employees, are they going to sell product? No. You got to talk about your product. Talk about your upcoming service projects. When you look at this website, anybody that's in business or does a website design, this is a classic hero-based website, meaning you're assuming the client's the hero and you're trying to help them solve a problem. So when someone looks at our website, what problem are we trying to solve for them? Do they want to serve their community? And you can't see it, but there's buttons that all say find service projects. So then when you click it, it goes to a page that shows our upcoming service projects. And that's where all our traffic is driving people to our service projects. We properly, like any company would do, we take advantage of social media. We, we pay an outside company $100, no, what is it? I think it's $50 a month. And they post on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Google My Business three times a week for us on our 50 bucks a month. Remember, we're a poor club, so I know everybody else has more money. Now, what do they post? They talk about our upcoming service projects. It says, oh, you know, do you wanna help pick up litter on Saturday at 10? Click this link. That's what our mark, we're selling our product. So people are seeing all this information saying service project, service project. And we ask our members to let people, no recruit people to Rotary, but recruit people to volunteer because we need more volunteers and we need Rotarians. And we know they, if, if we're nice, they'll join. And so take like a company would do, take advantage of social media and marketing, but you got to know what your product is. You got to know what your client is. So if our product is service, we want our clients, the public to know about service opportunities and we have to make it easy for them to do it. If you have to, if they got to go through seven links, uh, it's not going to happen. No different than when you see something on social media trying to sell you something, you click it, you want to buy it. <laughs> you know, that's more business. We got to treat our clubs like a business. In this corner, SEO. We take full advantage of SEO. If anybody Googles Rotary and Plano, no matter other six clubs, they come to us. If they Google service, it comes to us. We've been doing this for two and a half years. Massive, consistent search engine optimization, with black backlinks, anybody that knows anything about it, we're treating our club like a business. Remember, I'm a business coach, so I just applied what I do with companies, what billion-dollar companies do. I did it with Rotary. This is what RI does as well. It doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. You just got to be willing to do it. So that's the second thing. Properly use public image, which is sales and marketing, to let the public know about our product so they can take advantage of it. Then the third thing is, obviously, we got to turn our membership committees into dual roles, employee resources, taking care of our employees, and customer satisfaction, taking care of potential members who are our volunteers. So when you have a service project, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Let me explain what this is, if you don't know. This is our vision statement for Rotary as an organization. This is our club's vision statement. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. So people unite. Get the public involved. Take action to create lasting change. Those are called service projects across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. We got to take care of our people. As we know, this stuff has been out there for years. We just ignore it. This isn't new. You know, that's why Rotary has me speaking all the time. I'm just preaching the message. I just happen to actually use it and have success so people will listen to me instead of a boring, this is what you should do, but it's never been done, which we've all heard a lot of Rotary talks like that. I have. <laughs> you know? And so this, this is well documented. It, it does work and it can work. And so when we take a look at our organization and we decide we want to take care of our people and give them a purpose, the purpose isn't showing up at meetings and listening to speakers. It's to actually serve in your community and change lives. That is my measure of success. How many lives are changed by our actions? No matter how great that speaker is, if we didn't change a life, we failed as an organization because that's not our mission. We are, we are service of self, not great speakers of self, you know, or write a check of self. We are service. And so we always have to be focused on what our, we have a mission and we also have our vision statement. And if you go through our, what I call our guiding principles, if you look at the object of Rotary, it talks about service, the avenues of service, the areas of focus, everything that's important to us talks about service, but we don't do it. So that's why we can grow through service. So I don't know how much time we have, but I wanted to open it up to have Plano West Rotary is not the only club that volunteers in the community and gets the community involved. I'd like to hear about somebody talk about their club or another club they know that's doing the same thing, that has a service project that, that they're partnering with an organization in the community and they're inviting non rotarians to volunteer with them. Anybody? Hmm. Pam, I see your hand up. Go Pamela DeMars. Well, I'm just going to say this is very new to us, but we are working. We just picked up a literacy campaign and something big that we want to do. And we've started to gather all these groups that are doing literacy. And I just see that as the future. We're not there yet, but that's our vision. Take all these groups and let's work together to make a difference in our community instead of all of us trying to do one thing or one thing. Can um, I give you a twist to it? Absolutely. Because you're making it into a committee. Remember I says, if you have to have a yes, committee. Yes, I did committee, catch that. Yep. Why don't you just take one of those groups and say, hey, what are you doing next month that we can help you on? Good it's tip. that simple. Mm -hmm. Anybody Thank else you. have a great example? Keep it simple because if you form that committee, it's the future. You know, we'll be retired before it happens. And that's what Rotary is really good at. So we we are having, a, a, we've got so many people online that I can't see all of you. So if you have a, a comment, if you could go to the the reactions button on uh, and raise your hand, uh, then you'll come immediately to the top of my screen. So, uh, but I think Sharon maybe had her hand up. So go ahead, Sharon. No, no, she said no. Okay. We she also have, we do have some questions in the chat. Yes. But let's, uh, let's see. Any, any questions first before we get, I mean, any comments before we get to the questions? Other other people with service projects, recruiting, you know, non rotarians Well, let me give you an example. And this is actually the beginning of our club growth. During COVID, in fact, this was kind of discussed in a Rotary magazine a couple of years ago. We started a Rotary Community Corps, which I know you're in Minnesota, you guys have a number of them. And the way it started, well, we have four minutes left. Should I wrap this up? Uh, yeah. well, finish your thought and then, well, I, I want to get to at least a couple of these questions. So, so let's skip the story. Let's go to the questions. All right. 
Um, the the first question I saw was, were all of your original members on board with your new service model, or did you have some turnover? Well, that's actually a great question, and it comes up a lot. We didn't. We, we were a dying club. We were a dying old club, and everybody was um, at home because it was Zoom, and so. We didn't say, I didn't say, actually, my story kind of leads into this. So I'm going to tell my story because it kind of explains how we evolved. When I was just in Minnesota, I was just in Minneapolis a couple weeks ago, and uh, Catherine um, Gump toured me on the George Floyd in all that area, which is pretty amazing. Well, when that went on, that was also around COVID time. And protests were going, and obviously, as a Black man, I was very sensitive to that, but I'm not a protester but I wanted to make a difference. So I was thinking, how can I make a difference without putting my life in danger by protesting? And I'm like, well, you know, I have this presidency coming up. We, I can't do anything to stop systemic institutional racism, but I can do something to help those that are affected by it. And so in Plano, we have a community called the Plano Douglas community that was a former slave town called Freedman Town. And now it's just a neighborhood, but it happens to be the poorest neighborhood in Plano. And it's the most ethnic, obviously. It's majority Black and Hispanic. Well, I, what, I, what, I, what I did was I talked with people I know that were involved in Douglas community. And I said, hey, what do you think about if we partnered, Rotary, Plano West Rotary partnered with you to help those in the community. And they're like, that would be great. We didn't think Rotary cared about Black people. And I said, well, they got a Black president, so they're going to have to deal with it. And I go, we've got this structure called the Rotary Community Corps, an RCC, where we, um, we partner with an organization. They don't have to join Rotary, but we help them in their mission. And they're like, that's great. So we went and got one chartered. We actually chartered in June. Well, then July came around and nothing was happening. So I called up the, the chair of the RCC, which is president of the nonprofit or the community development organization we partnered with. And I'm like, hey, we got this RCC thing. Is there anything we could do to help? And he's like, and it's like, yeah, just last week, we were trying to deliver food to the families. It took us eight hours because we only had three people. And there's only like about 180 homes. And I'm like, well, we can help with that. So I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I went back to our club. You remember that RCC that we started? They're like, oh yeah, really? Okay, you know, no, you know how Rotarians are. It's one of the many things. I go, we have an opportunity to volunteer and deliver food. Wednesday night, we'll show up at the Douglas Community Center. Uh, how many want to do it? You know, and this is, I was president and all that. Yeah, how, many, how many people do you think actually um, signed up? A big fat zero. Nobody wanted to do it. So I'm like, oh, great. So I texted all my friends, people that I knew. I'm like, hey, who wants to help out? These are people I knew that cared about um, service. And so we had, I think I had about five or six people. So we got it done in about three hours. And I'm like, great, when, when are you doing this again? He's like, well, in two, um, two weeks. We're planning on doing this every other week. So I went back to the club. There, we, it was great. We could do it again. Who wants to help? Zero wanted to do it. You know, because we were not a service club. We were, we wrote health fundraisers, we wrote checks. We had a great big check that we were really proud of that we did. They, remember, median age of 67. <laughs> you know, they, they didn't want to do anything. So once again, I asked everybody to show up, bring a friend. So they brought a friend. We knocked it out in two hours. So then the, I'm like, oh, hey, forget these guys. <laughs> you know, we're just going to keep on doing it. But some people said, so how's that going? I go, it's going great. We've had all these people show. Who? Who from the club? Well, me. Well, who's these people? Just people in the community. Well, then they wanted to get involved. Because tell me, don't Rotaries want to get Rotary members want to be involved if they don't have to organize it? They don't have to be responsible. All they have to do is show up and go home. Well, then they were game on that. So we end up getting the majority of our club, we're only 21 members, would show up. Even the 80-year-old would show up. You know, they just show up and look. So we, that's how it all started. Well, then we had to get organized. And then we ended up tapping it at 30 people every other week to deliver the food. And that's when we started doing the structure. Well, then we had these people that wanted to do more. So we started finding other service projects, finding organizations that would let us help. That's how it started. There was no committee, it was me. <laughs> so I tell um, Rotarians, Rotary leaders, 
It only takes one Rotarian for a service project. Ideally, have one Rotarian and nine people that aren't in Rotary because those are the ones that are going to join. <laughs> you know, that's how you expand your reach. That's how you get the message out. A typical ro Rotary club has a service project that's all Rotarians. Think of this concept. If you have a company that's selling a product, remember a product is service, and the only people that are buying it are their employees, how successful is that company going to be? Well, you're looking at Rotary's track record. We do service and only Rotarians are buying our product. Well, that's why we're losing. You know, people die. People get tired. We're not selling our product to other people. So you see how that analogy works so well? And so everybody is doing service projects. Just look at how you can invite the public to, to be with you. I want to. I got one more. But we're running out of time, Alex. Yeah. Sorry, Alex. We're running out of time. One more question I want to, to pose to you before uh, we uh, uh, depart. How did your club vet people before they showed up at a service project, especially at a school, if you'd never met them? Well, the school, this is the one thing about partnering with nonprofits. They already have vetting processes in place. So uh -huh. we work with okay. them. You know, like for example, anybody that's been a club president, mm -hmm. they know every February, March, you get an email from our insurance company that our dues are paid. If you actually read it, they actually tell you, they highly recommend that you use a release of liability form. Has anybody ever volunteer with a nonprofit and you had to sign a release of liability form? Everybody. Rotary clubs don't do it. If somebody got hurt at a meeting or service project, you and the district is gonna get sued. We're the only nonprofit that doesn't use um, release of liability forms. Our insurance company wants us for obvious reasons. Simple. So where, where that goes is the organization you're partnering with, it's an agency that already has an established volunteer process. They're going to tell you what you need to do. We'll just make sure you do it. So for the school districts, which require background checks, part of when people signed up, we, you know, they, if they didn't have a background check, they're going to have to go through the process. And it was a two week process for the school district. So whatever, same thing, if you volunteer for the city, we do a lot with the city of Plano. Well, the city manager is now a member of our club after seeing us do so much with his city and he decided to join. Well, as you know, cities have their requirements as well. And so now if we have our own project that there's no agency, well, they have to sign a release of liability form. That's the only requirement we have. And then okay. if they're kids, they, you know, there's other requirements. We have youth protection requirements involved as well if they're under 18. All right, very good. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, it's 8.03. So thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. I think we got a lot of good ideas. Uh, and uh, this uh, meeting, as you know, was recorded. Uh, so it will be available on the, uh, on the district website. Uh, and the, uh, uh, I'm also, well, uh, the chat will be recorded. And uh, I will ask Alex if you could look through the other questions on the chat and, and maybe submit some, some answers on that and could I'll you figure out a way to, to add it. Yeah, can you send me an email with the questions and I'll respond and yeah. I will also create a PDF of my slides. Perfect. But Perfect. honestly, my slides are mainly visual. You know,